So if you copy paste the bracket attached to the video, the harness bracket version 2, it should come exactly in this position so then you can hide or delete the body from the old one. If it doesn't you can just align it with the old one and you're going to see the difference here and then you just have to align this clip into the hole and into the new orientation so the harness will look like this now we don't have the issue here anymore so you see how simple uh, an issue can be solved just by doing the 3d study accordingly now let's design this last bundle so this clip in here i'm going to copy this into the harness and we are going to use that here on this small bracket welded on the body and white And in here we design a new branch. So if you remember we said that we can use the thicker corrugated tube on this which is 11.7. .7. So let's make this 12. And let's design it from this clip to this clip here. So this is going to be the harness going from the gearbox to the body and white. Let's add some slack to this part. So this bundle here, it's also going to be 12 because of the wires coming in. Probably this one is to, let's just give a very very small slack here. So 1 is too much, let's do 0 0.1. Okay, so this is probably because we have the same bundle and it's bending here like this. But this is not a problem because it's the corrugated tube that makes it that thick. So if we do here 1.4. Okay, so we are okay now. Even 1.4 should be okay. And now you can also open the underbody grommet. So if you copy this into the harness, so into the gearbox harness product, and you need to align this like this with the hole in the body and right here. And this is how this is aligned. In fact, let me make a quick section. So this is how the body and white with the hole it's going to be right in between the surfaces of the grommet. So you're going to see that. So the grommet has a shape so it's made out of rubber and the way they uh, mount that it's uh, so this is designed in such a way that it can be mounted by force by hand so they can just push it in here. And that's why the hole in the body and white they are usually pretty big because you can you have to be able to also insert all the harness and the connectors through this hole and then mount the grommet in so this depends on how the harness is mounted always remember when you have a grommet it needs to be mounted by hand in the body and white and if you have connectors attached to the grommet the connectors also have to fit through the hole and if the grommet and if the connectors are being inserted from this side going down then all the grommet has to pass through the hole and then pushed up in the hole so this is also a method but always remember when you go through holes that everything you have on the harness needs to fit through that hole otherwise you cannot mount that harness so that's pretty obvious
and you would like to check the company requirements that they have for grommet mounting so this means that they will have uh, rules on how about grommets and one of the rules for example is if your connector is 20 millimeters wide let's say then the hole in the body and white needs to be 30 so it needs to have uh, 5 millimeters on each side or it needs to be 40 it needs to have 10 millimeters on each side so this is a rule that companies might have because when a hole like this is done on the body and white the body and white designer is going to do a hole with the diameter that you give it to him so he's not going to do it for you he, he only knows that he has to do a hole for the harness for your stuff but you are the one that is going to tell him how much that hole is going to be so that needs to be perfect it needs to be correct because if it's not done correctly and you cannot insert the harness then there is a big problem over there so you need to make sure that everything that has to fit through that hole is going to fit so we are going to talk about this in a separate video about grommet and now in here i'm going to design another branch and go from this connector to the grommet but first i would like to add the points on the grommet so it's one point here and i will add a point to the other side of the grommet So then let's add a branch from here to this point, like this. This can be 1.4. Okay, so it's the same problem that Katia does. You need to add just a little slack. So let's add some local slack in here. See one millimeter how it goes. Two, three. Okay, three millimeters is enough here. And this portion between this clip and this clip is going to be dynamic because the powertrain, gearbox, and engine they are going to be dynamic relative to the body and white. So there is going to be movement in between them. And that movement is uh, given by the suspension in the vehicle. So you need the suspension moves. You need, you know how the suspension moves in the car. So that movement, so that movement is between the powertrain and the body and white. So when you have something like this, you need to remember to ask from the powertrain people. They will have to give you all the movement positions for the powertrain, like the gearbox. So you'll have to give them a clip, the last clip, this one in position, and they will attach your clip to their model when they do the simulation of the movement. So then they will give you back the simulated gearbox with a clip. So you'll have this clip in several positions. So sometimes you might have 10 positions because this is not a back and forward movement like we had on the seats. This is a movement in all positions. So you need to design several pieces of harness in all positions and we are going to do that in the separate video about uh, dynamics and in there you're going to have a model like a uh, simulated model with the clip and everything so we are going to leave it like this for now and then from the previous project that we did we are going to use the inline b and line bb inline connector pair so you can copy both of those into this harness here and then let's take the inline BB so this is going to belong to the next harness it's going to be a connector positioned around here So right now we are not working on this. This is going to be fixed here into something.
So let's do some electrical assembly design. Make a connection between those two. Those are already electrified. So this is how when you have a library of connectors, this is how you are going to work in a company. You're going to already have most of the connectors. And this one, let's just... So this grommet in here is going to be slightly rotated like that. And also when you design the harness and you do the drawing, you need to add in the drawing like the inclination of this grommet, how it's rotated here, because otherwise it's going to rotate this cable here if you don't do it. So it's going to just twist this cable and turn it. So you want to make sure that relative to the clip or to something else, you just show the inclination of this grommet. This is something that uh, you need to provide because the people in the manufacturing plant can forget about stuff like this. And here is another branch from this grommet here. And here, let's try and continue this route. Okay. Adapter, I go to the connector. So in here, this blue connector, it's the plug connector. So it has uh, pins inside the housing. This one has the pins outside. This one has the pins also inside the housing, but uh, they can be seen, so you can put the finger inside. So that's why I added this connector on the side of uh, the gearbox harness. The gearbox harness doesn't come from any power source. So if you disconnect those on the gearbox harness size, harness side, you will not have any electricity. But the electricity will come from this other side, from the cabin harness. So that's why this connector has to be where the pins are protected inside so they cannot be touched. Or any other type of connector where the pins are protected like that. This is the correct way to do this. And here. Let's add some slack here. So we need to add slack until this piece of bundle goes inside the grommet. Also here. So in here, we added slack. Seems like this wire here goes pretty well inside the grommet. Let's do just a small modification. Okay, let's update this. So you see, you can check with the sectioning tool, how well this uh, stays inside. So it looks to me like it's there. If not, it can be adjusted even more, so you can add more points inside the grommet until you make this bundle fit. And make sure you do the bending radius for the cable, not for the corrugated tube also. So this is our gearbox harness. Make sure you save this. And try to keep this because in a future video we are going to deal with the dynamic part in between those two so we are going to make all of those dynamic bundles and find the solution there so see you in the next video